Good morning and many thanks for allowing me to be part of your Sunday morning this morning. I'm not far from home here at the Burns Cairn. Uh, behind me, of course, the Afton River made famous by Rabbi Burns. Flow gently, sweet Afton. I've been looking at the book of Revelation and I want to read just a couple of verses in Revelation chapter number four, describing the uh, scene in heaven that John uh, uh, witnesses. Revelation 4 verse 6. Also before the throne was something like a sea of glass similar to crystal. In the middle and around the throne were four living creatures covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature was like a calf. And the third living creature had a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. And we do look to God uh, to bless his word to us this morning. Well, interesting words there in uh, the book of Revelation. It describes to us a scene in heaven. And uh, one of the things that has often struck me about the Bible is that uh, we don't really read that much about heaven. And in fact, Revelation chapter 4 is one of the few chapters in which we, we do read about heaven. I suppose if I was to hand you a Bible and you had never seen a Bible before, and I was to tell you it was the book that God gave to reveal himself to us, there would be some things that you, you might expect that book to tell you about. I'm sure that you would expect that book to tell you, for example, all about God. After all, it is the book of God. And so it does. It, it tells us who he is, that he's the creator, tells us that he's the judge, tells us that one day we'll meet him, and tells us that we must get ready to meet him, and that the only way of meeting him uh, and to be right uh, and ready to meet him is by faith in his son, Jesus Christ. I suspect, too, that you, you might anticipate that that book would tell you all about yourself. After all, we are all interested in ourselves, aren't we? And so it does. It tells us that we are made by God in the image of God for the glory of God, for his pleasure, not just for our personal enjoyment. It tells us we're accountable to that same God. You might too expect it to tell you uh, a bit about uh, uh, some of those interesting things like angels and demons that seem to feature much in the uh, fiction and, and science fiction these days. And, and it does a little too. Uh, and I suspect too you would expect the book to tell you a little about heaven. And it does, but not that much. Perhaps because, first and foremost, we are on the wrong side of heaven. Uh, we are a people who are separate from God. Uh, we're distanced from him. If you read the beginning of your Bible, you'll find that many of the problems that we encounter today are because of just that. We are on the outside of that door that leads into heaven. We're separate from the God who made us and the God who created the world in perfection. And, of course, it is because of that that we have so many problems, so much suffering. Sorrow, sorrow and sadness. Well, in Revelation 4, we get a little glimpse into heaven. What is heaven like? Uh, and uh, some things, of course, uh, that we've noticed in Revelation 4 didn't really come much uh, of a surprise to us. Uh, for example, Revelation 4 speaks about a door into heaven. And uh, if you're familiar with your Bible, you'll say, well, I knew about that. <laughs> I knew there was a door into heaven. In fact, John told me about it in John chapter number 10. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. And the only way into that place is directly through the door, through Christ, by faith in the Lord Jesus. And of course, there was a voice crying, uh, a voice calling John like a trumpet in Revelation 4. It was the voice of the Lord Jesus. And that didn't really come too much of a surprise to us either, because the voice that John heard, uh, the very first voice that he heard in heaven, really was the last voice that he heard upon earth. It was a voice that called John personally. And you say, well, uh, Maybe I've heard that voice. I, I do trust that you have heard that voice. For in John chapter 10, the Lord Jesus Christ says, My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. If you've heard his voice here, if you've responded to that voice, if you've turned, repented and trusted in Jesus Christ, then you have this tremendous assurance that the last voice that you heard upon earth from God is the first voice that you'll hear in heaven. That is the voice of God's Son, Jesus Christ. But in those couple of strange verses that I read uh, this morning, there is a kind of a tragedy in them. Because in Revelation 4, we get a glimpse of the creatures before the throne of uh, God. And in that uh, glimpse, we see the character of God. 
Now here's a tragedy. The character of God is like a lion. He's sovereign. He's in control. He's authoritarian in many ways. He's powerful, working behind the scenes of the whole of human history. Uh, bringing to pass, for example, those hundreds of Old Testament prophecies in the birth, burial, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ and working behind your life too. Those strange coincidences you look back on and you say, that was odd. Uh, things that happened and maybe you were brought into contact with the good news of Jesus Christ. Maybe somebody just uh, handed you a Bible or something uh, strange. Or maybe you encountered a Christian and you got talking about spiritual things or your conscience was troubled by the Spirit of God. Well, he's sovereign and he's in control and at times he indeed will draw and he will speak. He's also a God who has a human face. Uh, you see, no one has ever seen God at any time, says John in John chapter 1, but the only begotten, the only born one, the only son uh, who is in the very heart of God, he has revealed him. And so God has made himself known in Jesus Christ. And Revelation 4 tells us not only is he sovereign, lion like and in control, not only has he revealed himself personally, intimately as his son, Jesus Christ, but he also uh, has made a provision for uh, each of us that we might be able to enjoy a living relationship with him and access into heaven. He did that sacrificially calf-like in Revelation 4. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, he who knew no sin, to be made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And that, of course, great provision is extended to us uh, today uh, through the word of God in the gospel for personal action. We have to do something about that. We must take a personal step of faith in Jesus Christ. And it's that personal step that opens the door of heaven. Well, here's a tragedy. Here's the punchline. John gets a glimpse of the glory of God, a glimpse of who God is like. And it's fascinating to see that the God of heaven is a God who reveals himself. He's a God who extends his hand to men and women. He's a God who reveals himself personally in Jesus Christ, who provides personally a sacrifice, a God who orders and ordains uh, behind the scenes and in the intimate details of your life. Now, here's the point. Let's just suppose for a moment that you fail to get to heaven, not because you've have done something that kept you out but because you didn't do something that would keep you out that is you failed to respond to Christ you you failed to take that step of faith as Jesus Christ extended his grace towards you you failed to turn in simple trusting faith in the Lord Jesus you failed to act upon what the apostle says in the book of Acts believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved you missed it well, here's the tragedy. All of your life, God has been extending his hand towards you. All of your life, he's been moving behind the scenes. All of your life, through 101 circumstances, he's drawn you to him and he's made provision that you might be there. I can't think of anything more tragic than that, than to miss heaven and yet to realise that all of your life, God has been, in many ways, pursuing you, uh, seeking you. I am come, said the Lord Jesus Christ, to seek and to save that which was lost. And yet, in the parable of the lost sheep, only one seems to be found. In the parable of the prodigal son, one returns. In the parable of the lost coins, only one is found. I trust that we may never be in the position of bitterly regretting a missed opportunity of entering through that door that is Jesus Christ and of enjoying uh, the presence of God forever. The word of God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Thanks very much for being with me this morning. Thank you.